We are in section 2A. One of the main things we're going to look at here is what are some problem solving strategies? How do you use them? The other day, we started talking about the idea of working backwards. Remember, if you got to meet somebody at 6 p.m., you got this, that, and the other thing to do. What time should you get up in the morning to make sure you're there at 5.45 p.m.? Okay. Working backwards is an example. When you are working on a problem, there are basically four seasons, steps, time frames to that problem. The first one is understanding the problem. It's real important before you get going to understand what it is you're going after. And sometimes people will come up, well, wait a minute, does this include, for example, figure out total cost for a vacation. And there have been times folks come up and said, okay, so I've got the, the fuel money to get there. Should I include fuel money to get back? And my comment is, unless you're walking home, you better include fuel money. But that question is really trying to understand what all needs to be included, isn't it? Okay? Yes, fuel money to come back home better be included. Those kinds of questions are important. It is important before you get started to really understand what's being asked and move on from there. Second thing is your plan. The plan includes how am I going to go about solving this? This is going to include things like, well, gosh, on this one, my plan is to work backwards. Okay, so the idea at the second step is, okay, I understand what you're asking. I understand what I need to do. Now i got to figure out how am I going to do that. Over the course of the semester, we're going to do nine different techniques for solving stuff. There are more, but this ought to get you started at least. Third thing is implement it. That means carry it out and actually get an answer. Seven is not an answer. There are seven ducks on the pond is an answer. A number without words around it is not helpful to people. Okay, So make sure that when you implement this, you come up with an answer that one, makes sense, two, is couched in a sentence to explain to folks what's going on. Makes sense. That's important. How much is gas? No lie. In past years, I've done a project with folks where they're figuring out how much they need for this, that, and the other thing on a vacation. And they come up with they're going to use 25,000 gallons of gasoline to drive to Florida. Now, I don't know what route they're taking, but 25,000 gallons of gasoline, if you get 20 miles to the gallon, you're going to be driving 100,000 miles. That's halfway to the moon. Okay? If you get an answer like that, it's funny, and if you're working with a group, it's a great point to laugh and giggle and tell, well, that can't be right. But it's really important that you get to the fourth step, whoa, wait a minute, that can't be right. One of the things we're going to look at, probably next Wednesday, why not Monday? Labor Day, right? Kids are going to be kayaking, meet up with Becky for a picnic. Okay. We'll be up at Houston Woods if you want to come. Okay. One of the things that we're going to be working with on next Wednesday, probably, is, okay, you buy your first house. It's going to be a fixer-upper. You have to paint and all kinds of stuff like that. Is 75 gallons enough paint to do the inside of a house? Depends how many square footage it is. I've got a hint for you. The first house that you have, 75 gallons is enough paint to paint that thing from now until it falls down. Okay? If you go to Lowe's and get 75 gallons of paint, will it even fit in your car? That's a hint right there. Okay? Is four or five gallons a reasonable amount? Yes. So checking your answer is critical. Okay? These four steps are real important. This PowerPoint is posted under the meta for notes. So if you want the PowerPoint, it's there. Okay. Understanding. Here's one that sometimes people are uncomfortable with. You may have to read the problem several times several times. That doesn't mean you're stupid if you got to read it a couple of times. Okay? In
grad school, there have been math problems where it took me two weeks to figure out what they were asking, and then another three months to solve it. Okay? So having to read a problem two or three times is no big surprise. Actually, it's a safe thing to do. Underline significant information so that you don't overlook it. Here's a really important one. Identify the information you need to obtain. How far is it from here to Yellowstone? When I was figuring out the vacation to Yellowstone, do you think I needed to know how far we were going to be driving? Yeah. Well, we'll get there this evening. Yeah, right, if we're flying in an F-22. Take three days of driving, 33 to 35 hours of driving to get there. Really? Okay? Especially if you've got people, I need to stop. I'm hungry. Okay? <sighs> Unfortunately, the drivers of the mindset, we start the car, we point it west, and we stop when we're at the hotel where we're staying tonight. Becky, could I need a cup of coffee? Honey? <sighs> they got it at the hotel. No, I'm going to need it before the hotel. <laughs> so, identify the information you need. You may have to look stuff up on the internet or elsewhere. Here's something else that's really important. Irrelevant information. Some of the information may be nice, but it has nothing to do with getting the information on how long is it going to take to drive to Yellowstone. Did you know that they got really cool geysers at Yellowstone? They do. Is that relevant to figuring out how long it's going to take us to drive there? It has not thing one to do with how long it's going to take. But are you really going to give us irrelevant information? Lots of times. Because in the real world, are you really going to encounter irrelevant information? <coughs> Lots of times, and you got to get used to weeding that stuff out. Okay? So I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm trying to get you ready for what's going on. Planning. These are the strategies that can be employed. Third step, carry it out. Decide if you've really got an answer that makes sense. Okay? Fourth step, does it make sense? And is it what you would expect? Make sense on the four steps? Real fair question, not for today's quiz, but for next week's quiz. Just a hint. Just a thought. Okay. Ah, Alicia is going on vacation to Hilton Head Island. She's got a nice condo on the beach reserved. Stop. Ah, nice condo on the beach. It's extra information, but odds are it's not something. Wait a minute. What are we looking for here? two-week vacation. She needs to estimate. Estimate what? Fuel cost. Is the fact that it's a BMW X5 relevant to fuel costs? Yeah. That gets very different fuel economy than a V10 four-wheel drive pickup truck than a let's see, my daughter's got a little Ford Fiesta. Fiesta gets 40 miles to the gallon. The Ford pickup truck gets about 8 miles to the gallon. The BMW gets about 18 miles to the gallon. Is that relevant information? Yeah. Oh, that would be something you'd have to look up. What's the fuel economy on that car? Okay. Is the fact that it's a two-week vacation important? Might be. Because if she's driving around... Okay. Oh, wait a minute. While at Hilton Head, she plans to walk. Everything's close. So once she gets there, what's she doing with her beaner? Parking it. So the only fuel costs are getting there and do you have to figure out getting home? Yeah, unless you're walking. Okay? Yeah. So you just like Yep. Yeah, we're assuming that she's just going to hang out in the condo. She's going to relax. Okay? And that's it. Go walk to the beach, ta da, things like that. And the condo has golf carts. Okay, saves you yours. So, yeah. And notice the question was an understanding question, wasn't it? Well, wait a minute, isn't she going to go somewhere nice that she might have to drive to? <gasps> She'll use a golf cart. So, it really is that, that question is driving toward is it really possible she's never going to drive her Beamer while she's there? 
it's an understanding question. Perfectly legit. So really, for this one, all you have to do is go online, find out how far it is from Cincinnati to Hilton Head. What else you need to figure out? How many miles per gallon the car gets. Then you got to compute how many gallons of fuel one way, double it. Then you need to get some idea of about what fuel is going to cost. Are you better off over budgeting or under budgeting? Over. If you got money left over, is that a problem? No. no. If you run out of gas in Tennessee and you don't have any more money, is that a problem? That's a long way to push your car. Okay? So you could overestimate and say, that's going to be three bucks a gallon. Then you can make a note. I'm hoping that this is an overestimate on fuel prices. So it makes sense. It's not horrible, is it? You know what? It's showtime. Already? Wow. Yeah. Okay, so we will pick up. We've pretty well talked through this problem. We'll start off on Wednesday with the next problem.